Hello, everybody. Let's exit the port. I am uh, here in uh, in the tiger's den, hanging out, and of course, joining me today will be no other than Grumbles the dwarf. Oh, dang it. I thought it was going to be a surprise guest. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you kind of are a surprise guest on a, on a Friday, <laughs> at least. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's be fair. Well, surprise with the D at the end, yeah. Uh, um, All right, we're not phrasing? Go phrasing? Right. phrasing? We're, not doing, we're not doing phrasing on that part? No? no okay. No. Okay. Well, fine. Uh... This is going to be a bit of a different episode of Exit to Port. Um, we are live on Twitch for the first time with this since uh, our first episode, actually, back in January. Uh, there will be no notifications, just so everybody's aware of that. Uh, we might keep an eye on chat if there's something that uh, pops up. I want to um, I want to uh, engage our mods into looking for topics or possible questions, and DMing us, please, if there's anything that is very pertinent and 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 feels like it could uh, fit in to uh, to this pretty please. Uh, this will be a live recording. Um, it will be going up on YouTube. It will be going up on all the other podcast places after I've done a tiny bit of editing, getting in the normal intro and everything. So there's that. But uh, without further ado, I want to say thank you to all of you who chose to be here live. And of course, thank you to everybody who chooses to listen to these uh, afterwards in, in the actual uh uh, in, in the actual uh... podcast verse, yes, wherever that may be. I if you're I, missing a word, make one up. Yeah, like no, that my brain doesn't allow me to do that. Sadly, I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could, honestly, but no, my my brain doesn't allow me to do that. It's uh, it, it's part of. The... <sighs> I've learned this through uh, through listening to another podcast that's called uh, the Wait What Was I Doing podcast which is run by three people with ADHD and several other uh, disorders mm -hmm. but they talk about their struggles and their diagnoses and, and so on and, and I'm starting to understand why my brain is working or not working the way it is when it does mm -hmm. the things it does so, so th th that whole stuttering and and stopping and and kind of going what is the word i'm looking for and then and just allowing my brain to actually find the word instead of just going thingy or doobly do or whatever it works for so many others but it doesn't work for me but when others use the words i fully understand them mm -hmm. and i'm all aboard with it <laughs> i just wish i could do it <laughs> you know so like Whenever you have a, a sentence you you're uh, you're trying to uh, to get across to me or others, and you insert thingy, I know full well what you're talking about, and I'm all on board, and I understand, <laughs> and I have no problem running with it. But if I try doing it, my brain's like, nah, nah, uh, uh, no, 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 we're not doing that. I'm like, why not? Everybody else work, makes it worse. Like, nope, uh, uh, not you. But why not? I have no good reason for you. I can't tell you. <laughs> yep. It is what it is sometimes. It is. It is indeed. So welcome to episode 10 of Exit to Port. Uh, we're going to keep... Like, last time, I really I really did enjoy the more laid back and, uh, and chilled out uh, version where we kind of just sat down and talked. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Yep. How about you? I liked it too. I thought it was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's one of those things where you think, 
I think at the or I, comparing it to earlier episodes where we were starting, I think there was a lot of oh everything must be uber structured and perfect and run like clockwork and and uh, it turns out Maori was wrong. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just playing on the <laughs> fact that Maori would say as a, as a that it would have to be perfect uh, structured yeah. as, a, as a German. But um, no, I, I agree. I think that the chilled out approach and um, you know it was quite simple as well. The clock was ticking yet again. It's the end of the month, and it we're is. trying to stick to one a month of these. So we thought, hey, let's experiment. Let's see what would happen. And, uh, hopefully, it'll be some fun. Uh, I do want to point out just very briefly that obviously we've got some technical limitations, mainly caused yeah. by my uh, camera shenanigans, I guess. Um, and we're trying to work on that. So I think that the overlay and everything we've got working on Tiger Side is is quite phenomenal, and I really like it. Um, almost to the point now where I sort of think, ah, oh, well, I should just end my stream and then we'll just come and hang out on your channel because it looks. Whereas on my end, it's very much the 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 okay, this is one that we need to send back to the lab and uh, and work on a little bit more. But um, I I want to I, I want to that... touch on that before you mm -hmm. you go on ahead and dig a hole that we don't need to dig. Yeah, because. I, I want to make it very clear to people trying to do this just how hard it is to make sure that the same video and audio in sync goes out to both channels. Yeah. Because that's what we're dealing with right now. We are sitting here trying to get the same video and audio to go out to both channels. So we had one moment where we're like, ah, if you are mm. the camera and I capture it, then that's going to be good. But what we ran into then is the horrible desync between the audio that I would be putting out and the, the video. So yeah, uh, yep. we are going to be working on it. I, I, why, hold on. Why, why are we not just using things like, oh, I don't know, streaming to the same channel? Yeah, I thought about that like a sort of a... Hey, I'll, looking at it now, video-wise, yeah. right? I'm happy with audio, and I'm happy to have the chats running so that everybody can can uh, throw pipe things in where they where they want to and everything. Yeah. But I also, uh, I, you know, I was just like, oh, I'll just host your channel. It'll, <laughs> it'll look a lot better, a lot more straightforward. But I think that also, um, I'm not. I don't feel bad about it because I also think this is a good experiment to run and to oh, learn yeah, from. Very much so. Very and I think we've learned a lot already about oh, yeah. how to make this kind of work um, and be pretty well synced up. And it almost looks like we're in the room across uh, from one another, um, <clears throat> at least on your end. Uh, <laughs> on my end, you look like you've broken through the back of the cave. But I think that this, uh, we already know how what we would do differently if we had more time yeah. to set up and we already both have a lot of ideas that we want to work together maybe even on stream we talked about doing some pomodoro some uh, mm -hmm. work together to actually creatively conjure up some of these things and and play with them uh, live and show you guys some a little bit of sneak peek not entirely behind the curtains but a little bit of sneak peek um at some of the stuff because i know a lot of you folks are really interested in uh, in streaming and and kind of how we put these things together um, and what our thought process is around that. So I think that um, we definitely uh, will definitely work on things like this and it will only get better. And sometimes you have to experiment and prototype so that you know what the next iteration is going to be like. So Indeed. I'm happy with it. Indeed. No, we, we will be doing more work uh, coming forward with both uh, my channel, Grumble's channel, and another channel mm -hmm. that we'll touch on later on. Anyway, mm -hmm. yes. let's let's just kick it right off. Let's talk about World of Warships because we we can't we can't really shake the fact that we are World of Warships players and we we've, we've been that for a long time. Um and and getting like lately like we've had subs, we've had new types of CVs entered in and so on. And there's been yeah. been a lot of grief going on. A lot of people have been very angry about what's going on. And and firstly, I wanna I wanna kind of touch on on subs. I'm not happy with the way they are, but I'm mm -hmm. liking what they are producing and putting out forward into the dev blog as to where they want them to go. 
Mm -hmm. And they are being, they're still being very open and honest mm -hmm. about communication. So again, I'm very for saying this is good work. Keep it up for you. Like this sort of communication is good. <clears throat> let's, let's, let's keep this going. Yeah. So I have a quick question mm -hmm. um, uh, about where the subs are going. Is it to Nintendo Switch? <laughs> ah, okay. So they're staying in the game. Okay, I they, see what you mean. Developmental they roadmap. Are, as well. yeah. Okay, they're not... Li oh, no, oh, well, sorry, I tried, chat. There <laughs> no, you go. Like the, the, the thing is, like uh, they, they've been getting a lot of feedback uh, on how people view them in game and and what kind of impact they've had and mm -hmm. and they can see that they've had a big impact um and so they they are dialing it back they're trying to find a good place and i'm still going to keep crossing my fingers because i'll be honest mm -hmm. i was i was afraid of how mm -hmm. they would hit randoms but i still mm -hmm. needed to see them hit randoms before i could start making up my mind regarding just how hard they hit randoms mm -hmm. um and and yeah there are certain times where a sub has just been absolutely too overpowered and insane mm -hmm. but it's not really been the rule i feel mostly i've had control over subs when i've come when i've encountered them i don't feel like i've been completely outplayed how about you mm -hmm. um so i've had a lot less time in the game um than your good self but um my experiences have been um firstly i don't feel particularly inclined to play them it's just no. just to have that said now of the way um they just don't really appeal to me um they appeal to me from a historical and a relevance point of view but they don't appeal to me in the context of playing that arcade game um that i love still over all these years we might have a bit of a falling out but i still uh would would uh love to <clears throat> be able to play that with a big smile on my face at all times um which will probably make some people smirk already um but in terms of playing against them what i found is there's very um circumstantial in in regards to well one not a lot of people have played them a lot and, and gained experience and become let's call them good at playing them so i think you can start to see the difference between players who've thought of thought it through experimented a bit and thought okay this is the niche this is where we're going to go and, and some of those kind of submarines where you're constantly being talked at you never see the thing you've got no clue it's capturing cat points um, probably killing the enemy sub off as quickly as possible so it's got the underwater to itself, avoiding CVs where possible and, and destroyers and just being a nuisance. I've seen that a couple of times. Very powerful, you know, 2,500 base XP type game, that sort of thing at tier 10. And you're like, okay, but that's the exception and not the norm. The norm is the people just kind of, you know, dipping in and out around the caps, running away whenever something gets near to them, that kind of thing. Um <laughs> And and then you see the torpedoes and you get the lock on and you're like okay and generally people haven't don't seem to have got the knack for the timing yet so you're not feeling super threatened by them battleships obviously a bit more than everything else because yeah. you're less maneuverable so it's a pain um, but um, other than that the only other thing I've noticed is it can be a bit annoying if you're in a sneaky boat if you're in a destroyer or even a quite sneaky cruiser, and you're just thinking, hey, you know what, I think this cap's pretty empty, or I don't think I'm going to be spotted here, and you just kind of sneak, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, detected. Yeah. That's And that's the worst feeling, I think, especially as someone who, I would never describe myself as a main in anything, but I play destroyers, I guess, mostly, um, um, or the most, I should say. And that feels a bit frustrating because... You kind of taken my stealth away from me, yeah. Um, and uh, so there's a bit of that, but uh, overall, I, and the, oh, so, sorry, it would be wrong of me not to mention that the t submarine and four destroyer lineup, otherwise known as Death by Mega <laughs> Torpedo or whatever, <laughs> uh, um, that one feels um, uh, kind of rough. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people, that's kind of one of the bits of the meta where, you know, you get this, the one CV, the one sub, the four destroyers, 
and then you're like maybe there's one cruiser in there somewhere and a bunch of fat boats rolling around going um yeah because one thing with with uh battleships at least is that they actually have the hp and the ability to heal out a lot of this yeah cruisers not so much some of the battle cruisers yes but they they feel more squishy to this but it, again we're, we're talking a highly specialized dd so we're, we're just gonna have to keep an eye on them and 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 see how they keep on developing and and honestly with the balancing changes coming it might get better it might get better uh but there's one thing i want to mention something uh -huh. that has really like i i am I am fully way back when to early German battleship secondary fun release here, honestly. The entire new line from the, the is it yeah, it's the von der Tann. That's the tier three. Yep. Up to the Schlieffen at tier ten. Oh Lordy. <laughs> Oh my god, they're so much fun. They're they're maneuverable. Mm -hmm. They have the secondaries, they have good main batteries. Um they're they're just a lot of fun. Like I struggled so badly. I struggled so badly with not releasing NDA stuff <laughs> during the testing of these ships because they were so much fun. And mm -hmm. I wanted to tell the world this is coming and this is fun this is ah you know mm -hmm. i was there yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and you saw it today uh earlier in the grumbling the one of the matches where we went on one flank uh i was mm -hmm. in the chief and you were in the was that the republic game or uh my was either the i think it was thunder where you went around the outside yeah of the yeah you were in the thunder right? yeah, yeah you were yeah, in the thunder in the middle oh. yeah. Oh yep. boy, we wrecked that flank. Yeah, I think there was a Tash Kent that realized it wasn't very much fun to be the, close to a Schlieffen. <laughs> the, the first one was actually the mines coming around being all hot uh, shit, and aha, I'm going to torp you, I'm going to burn you down. No, wait, no, I'm not, no. because I'm just going to be secondary down and main battery down, and then he's just going to hydro away from my torps. And then the Tashkent popped up and like, ha ha, I'm hot shit. No, no, I'm on fire. Run away, run away. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I'm covered in hot sauce. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, ah! no, that was a, like, that was a middle of the tree kind of game for me with 136,000 damage. Like, oh my God, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And the entire line is fun. Yeah, it, it is. Like you, you saw even the, the ones where we played the Moltke. Tier four. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, tier four, milky, milky, loads of fun. Six kilometer secondaries, yeah. pew, pew, pew. Um, yeah, looks like a, a good laugh. And you know, you're not wrong in terms of that old school feeling because it's things like that where I'd be like, a little bit like when they did the rework of the rework of the rework. Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, we can actually have some fun here and play battleships. And then they were like, we're glad you're happy. Have some submarines. I was like, what the? What is your? <laughs> what is your malfunction? <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, again, we can't, can't, we're just getting the jibe in every once in a while. But yeah, this one, those ones feel like, again, more of that return, you know, and it's, mm. I guess in one hand, it's like, oh, why did it take so much effort and so long to kind of, I, I think maybe they finally get it that, yeah, you can make bucket loads of cash out of your product. Yep. Cool. But what if loads of people or the vocal minority, whatever people want to refer to as, but what if a lot of the people that are streaming and playing and viewing have massive smiles on their faces? Exactly. Like they have had in the past. Um, and I think that maybe that message is finally getting through uh, through to them. So, And you're right about the communication point earlier. Couldn't agree more. You know, you it's crucial. You've got to get it right. And I don't think companies aren't really going to su succeed for an extended period of time. Now, I'm sure they want to be around for another six years or more yeah. on top and have the 12-year anniversary. I think that would be an awesome achievement. And the way to do that is to understand and engage with your community and not just the Twitch part, but everything. And I think they've done good in growth and numbers and financially. Mm. Now it's time to say, okay, how do we make that sustainable? 
Oh, yeah, and, and and Wargaming kind of have a, a, a leg up uh, when it comes to that because they have been early on with a very streamable game. And they yep. have very early on engaged their streamers in 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 talking with the rest of the community and and and, and doing that part uh, so and, and there's no doubt in my mind that wargaming will be around and they will keep on doing these things uh if they are good at, at keeping up the communication because if they fall back on 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 old ways again nah no, uh, they're going to struggle. They're going to struggle, and uh, we are going to touch on a on a different um, game and company that have had that bump. And I'm not saying they're squeaky clean, but yeah, they they are definitely uh, they are definitely working their way back too, and and have done that in a big way, and that's Skyjin with War Thunder. So, uh, but we we're going to talk more about that a, a bit later. But man, no, I'm 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 getting to the point where World of Warships definitely is a lot of fun again. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's still they're they're still kind of throwing all that content at us at at mm -hmm. an insane pace. Yeah, that was one thing I wanted to tag on, but I want to keep it like as positive as possible because I think there's more positive. The negative right at this very moment that can change quite rapidly as we've seen in the past but um i i would also you know second that and say that like just by spending playing the game once a week and then popping back into the armory like last week and this week and i had exactly the same experience last week and this week so it was consistent unfortunately it was consistently the fact of now some will laugh because obviously it's my brain power and everything else but I was really confused. I was like, or no, overloaded, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can. Like, I can overwhelmed. Yeah. But there's just, it was like, there's this thing. Then there's this other thing. And there are, the, what are there, like four specific subcategory or three at least. So you've got, you've got the Warhammer, mm. the uh, German battle cruisers, yep. the Russian CVs. Yep. Oh, and then Halloween. So yeah, so you've got four like event cascading things running in parallel. It's not like one or two have fallen away and one or two have come in. You've got those running in parallel mm -hmm. and then you've got the resources mm -hmm. and the research bureau points and then things you can get for money and then your consumable yep. bits. And I was, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And at the bottom, there's a confusing thing like here, you can buy extra stuff. If that's, if all that wasn't enough right at the bottom. And so, yeah, just to, to make it a bit more concise, it was like, please stop bombarding us with, you know, you, if you want to hit me with a new thing with a patch, maybe take one or two of the other ones away or make them, you know, put them somewhere. It was just yeah. too much. You know, I, I, I have to bring in, uh, the Gaijin here in War Thunder. Mm-hmm with the way they do things where as a content creator, the game has a very natural flow. There are, there are very, very natural amount of elements going on. Like mm -hmm. we have, we have the battle pass that they don't overlap. Like I think we have a week overlap or something. And mm -hmm. It's not a whole lot. Um, where you have your tasks, you have your goals, you have your things you work towards. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the there's the daily tasks, the the easy and the medium, and then of course there's the special tasks that you can work on for part of the battle pass. Mm -hmm. This is all part of the war bond shop that they have. But. Mm -hmm. In a larger patch, like we've just had groundbreaking, we we're going to be touching more on this. Yep. They release a few vehicles, but they have a few things they showcase. They have a few things that they focus on and say, this is the focus of this patch. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to do. Yep. And it, it just feels... So much more relaxed. I get to play the game in a good pace. I get to work through my tasks. I just 
one at a time and, and enjoy it the way I want it. It's not like, uh, okay, I'll play some from menu number one today and then menu number two tomorrow, Jim. And maybe if I completed A, B through C uh, and I refute Pythagoras, I can then play from menu D, you know, because yep. that's what that's what Wargaming feels like. And I, yeah. I, I will be harping on about that again and again. Like it's, it's too much. Yep. Like if they, if they made, let's say, a PVE event, mm -hmm. and also a PVP event around the release of the subs. Yep. Showcasing how they work in PVE for those who like PVE, and how they work in randoms for those who like that where you have missions where you work towards them you 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 either work towards learning how to take them out or you work towards learning how to use them you know yep and then let's have a, a week of downtime and then we can say hey here's german battle cruisers <laughs> you know and so on and and work it in that way i <laughs> There's just so much going on. And then with the with the idea of, of seasonal events, because Wargaming do seasonal events, War Thunder do seasonal events, and there's so many others that do seasonal events. Let's let's chill it out to um Christmas with the box givey stuff. Um <laughs> April Fools where you have one week of weird game modes and weird happenings maybe like it doesn't even have to be a big patch you need, like just give us a novel game mode that we can play around with yep um then there's the anniversary thing yep I uh, when was that that that's not been too long ago yeah was it, it... It's still running, and it was like 48 uh, days or something, so yeah, about some, a month or so ago. Something yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. End but, of September. But let's let's stick to that. Like, we don't have to have a summer event with this. Like, you have enough ships. You have enough stuff going on to just let things roll. Yeah. yeah. You know what the image that went through my mind was like, you have like a, like, whatever, you know, standard boxy car thing no. right and then we talk about use the phrase bells and whistles and it's like every month like just somebody's gluing more bells and whistles <laughs> on another part of, and eventually you've lost sight of what like what is the objective here yep. that nobody knows that there's a car underneath anymore yep. because there are so many bells and whistles on it um and eventually at some point someone comes along with a car and and, and sort of parks it and you're like Wow, hey. one of those would be really cool. We should yeah. make one of those. It's oh, like it's, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree. I think um, simplicity, and 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 sometimes I think. Well, I, I don't know what the rationale behind it is. I think it's a simple rationale of more content or additional bells and whistles equals more cha ching. I don't yeah. think it's any more complicated than that. And I think that, again, maybe the, the signs are there that they've recognized that, of course, they want the cha-ching, that's not going to change, but just dumping more and more bells and whistles on top all the time, eventually you're not going to be able to see the actual vehicle beneath and the point of it all. So no, we'll, I mean, see. Exactly. we'll see. I, I, I feel like the like, when you mentioned the bells and whistles and, and tacking on more and more of them, it reminded me of um, an animated show I used to watch on, on YouTube called Battlefield mm -hmm. Friends. Uh, mm -hmm. It started coming out when Battlefield 3 was uh, was big. It's by the Neebs Gaming Channel that I have uh, I know I've mentioned before. Uh, yeah. And, and, ooh, they've just got the rights back to their own stuff. So they've just re-released everything. So oh. and they're going to be making a new series now with a new Battlefield. Anyway, oh, so cool. so during Battlefield Three, like yeah. one of the biggest things you could reach was level one hundred. Okay. So you, you're called a, a a colonel then. You're a level one hundred colonel. So and one of their characters was based off this. He was the level one hundred colonel. He was a real badass. You know, he could kill anything <laughs> with a knife. 
he could knife a helicopter, you know, he was that kind of guy. <laughs> and 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 one of the skits that they made, they talked about him unlocking a bipod for his knife. Like <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And then and then they did a throwback to it later where they had oh yeah, my bipod knife now has a bipod. So there's a bipod on your bipod knife. Wait, oh God. hold on. So it, that 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 was the immediate where uh, immediate place my brain went to when when yeah. you mentioned like all the bells and whistles that they're tacking on there. Like, how many bipods do we need, warships? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why why are there fifteen bipods attached to the steering wheel? <laughs> We exactly. can't even steer anymore. We can only go in a straight line. <laughs> and then someone at Wargaming who developed the submarines is like, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Oh, but you're right. Um, but yeah, to, talking uh, more briefly, touching on the Gaijin and the big patch, uh, the groundbreaking. Uh, mm -hmm. I love it. Um, I've decided that, that, that with my dwarven friends that, that we're calling it the diggy diggy hole patch. Um, <laughs> we had a very short go at it yesterday. We took one of the AVREs out with the shovel on the front and we just went around digging holes yep. uh, in, a, in a little test drive. Um, also, there's another feature straight off the bat, test drive. Hey, we want to know what this what this vehicle shit whatever's like. I know, right? Right click test drive. What? I can play this for, yep. for okay, not in a proper battle, but I can just get a feel for how it moves and shoots mm -hmm. and oh my god, that was uh yeah, that was really enjoyable. So yeah, then we just went around, dropped the shovel, dug ourselves a little bunker hole or whatever and and then went around and shot something. It was that was just uh very enjoyable. So <laughs> I look forward to the weekend doing some more diggy diggy hole. Now that they've also announced Twitch drops. Yes. This weekend. Went live in the news today. Uh, started at three o'clock GMT, so a few hours in now. Uh, make sure you've got your account hooked up if you're into Twitch drops in the War Thunder. That was actually a thing. I I, I forgot I was going to lurk on somebody playing War Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, Hold on it. one moment, podcast viewers, while we uh, yeah, just get our there lurk we on. go. Just going to make sure to. There we go. Going to lurk on Odd Boss. Odd Boss, one of the CCs <laughs> and. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I was on John's channel earlier. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Lurking there uh, to get myself some drops. Good, 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 good. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Speaking of War Thunder, we should uh, we should set up uh, a custom match one day. Mm -hmm. And go in and have fun, and see mm -hmm. what kind of creators we can uh, create. With uh, with a certain bomber, known as the PE eight. <laughs> okay, is this one of the uh, carpet bombers? No. Well, it can, but it has okay. a certain five ton bomb. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, bombs create be craters now. <laughs> yes, they do. I've uh, driven through a number of them. Oh my word. Um, yeah, I, I actually had a, one of the funnest things, but I don't know if this was like already there and I just hadn't. But uh, building collapses and stuff and then the craters and the whole immersion factor. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there in my little SPAA going, oh, I hope nothing comes and shoots me and finds me around this corner because there were lots of tanks around. I was <laughs> down up tiered or whatever because I was doing the usual, oh, I've got this one high mid-tier rental ship and that's the rest of the lineup, not so much. So I was doing that that thing that I do, which is a bit naughty, but you know, and uh, and then like a whole building kind of collapsed around me, and then there's all the craters and all that, and it just felt so, you know, it's already a very immersive game, and it just amped up another couple of notches, and I thought this is this is really good. This can this can go places. We couldn't quite take it to the level of building our digging our own bunker out yet, but no, sadly, maybe. maybe. No. But like, no, the, the the thing you mentioned about buildings collapsing and such. There's a couple mm. of maps where. If you drop the bomb in the right place, mm -hmm. um, the entire village will be gone. Okay. And and the way you play that that uh, that point that's there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. changes completely. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if we could get something like that in in worships? I mean, like let's let's I, say yeah. let's say two brothers. Yeah. And and there's an avalanche event or something. Yeah. Suddenly the say, middle channel getting, gone. 
Yeah. Like, you're forced to go around. Like, there's no no way of going in down the middle. And if you're sitting there as a DD towards the end and kind of sneaking in, they're like, haha, I'm gonna... And then you hear skaploosh yeah. behind you. Like, oh, Oops. boss. Uh oh Yeah. Ah. Uh, so, I like the idea. Listen. I like the idea. <laughs> Where both teams agree at the start, let's let the submarines rush through the middle, and then both teams agree... <laughs> To bomb either end, like hit every art, everything at either end, and just leave the subs in the middle, just sort of hello, hello, hello waving yeah. at each other. Yeah, just have the subs in the middle there going, uh, shit, yeah. boys, we've been set up. Shit, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's and, a they're like, and they're underwater for nine minutes trying to stay hidden from each other, <laughs> and then eventually, that whatever the time is, and they just run out of air, and then you just see these two really sad, like U boats, just in, like periscope, like. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kinda, because have you ever had have you had that interaction in More Thunder yet? Where you kinda uh, you're staring down towards somebody and then they're kinda going yeah. they're wiggling their turret at you got no 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 I don't shoot me, no, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. <laughs> it's most I think a lot of people have had that looking at my vehicle. Where I'm like <laughs> Is it alive? Is it, is, it, <laughs> wait, is it bush tank? Tank debris? Um, and then, and so there's probably been a lot of people looking at me, uh, waggling my, my elephant trunk at them. And then they'd be like, oh, yeah, we'll just shoot that guy because he's clearly <laughs> confused. Because I, I saw that, uh, I think it was one of the more recent Free the Brain videos where he, uh, where, where he, he showcased, there was, there was some clip about two people sitting on each side of a rock mm -hmm. and and through third person they could see each other right right and then they kind of went they both shook their turret and and shot off in a different direction <laughs> and then they kind of they drove on <laughs> towards each other's <laughs> enemies like <laughs> oh, <bye>. <laughs> <laughs> they're both like that didn't work let's call it a truce yeah i was like yeah let, let's just let's just walk away from each other here mm -hmm. <laughs> You're kind of like fair enough. Yeah. I I really like that. I was like, yeah. Like, how often have you seen something like that in in warships? It's never, yeah. never. Yeah, like, never. You, you you can't really shake your turrets at somebody going, no, 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 don't shoot me. Well, you could, but I don't think they'd see it. Uh, a Yamato no. doing a thirty second turn to shake his turret uh, at you. Like, yeah, no. Uh, they usually did a speed up video. It'd probably be quite fun if you put some dance music in, and made like a bit of a techno. Take no sped up video to it or something. Why am I now hearing <laughs> Russian rave music in my head while a Yamato is oozing its way through yeah. you know, through two brothers? <laughs> Techno Viking at the, on the front of the curve first. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, make it happen. Well, more gaming. Make Next it happen, April please. Falls. So we uh, we've already touched a bit on War Thunder, and I I. Yes. I'm I'm really loving the game. I'm loving it as well. And one thing I the, so the things we've talked about I think before are like, you know, the the more of an emphasis of team play or maybe it feels more impactful or whatever you can argue back and forth whether people are actually team playing or it's just sort of coincidental or whatever, but I feel like having spent a few weeks in it and several years in the other that I can see the difference in a neutral sense, not in an emotional, oh, well, I don't like this one or whatever like that. But, you know, we all know that wargaming products are oriented around the individual and you succeed and it's all about you. Um, and so far, my experience in the battles of War Thunder is it's much more about what everyone's doing collectively. And you see that in the, both in the one-sided battles, but also in the great comebacks where it's like you've nearly lost and then the team just you know pulls pulls it back and yeah. captures the points and whatever that's the you know so i really like that um but the other thing is um um also my experience with with the gaijin team and the um the cc program where they've be, just been i so i was never a part of the other uh program just chose not to um uh, for for better or for worse, and and it's kind of too late now, right now, or they need to you know wait for the reboot. But with the Gaijin thing, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. But uh, Mike and Tom there have been so um, incredibly welcoming um, and just very relaxed and mm. 
almost like normal or whatever you'd say, like just, just understanding that they're working with, you know, obviously predominantly streamers and content creators, and they've just got that kind of vibe. Like they've, they understand it and you see them every week on their various streams that they're a part of or, or running. It's also very relaxed. There's a lot of good humor in there. There's a lot of openness about things that are not quite working right or where there's a bug or things that they experience because they're also active players and you, that really comes across I feel like how much they're active players. They they yeah. they feel like players who also are community managers as opposed to community managers who also play. If that Yeah, makes it makes sense. sense right? It makes sense. And and I love that. So they're like very open and honest when it's like, oh, we really don't like this thing or this bit really troubles me or that bit doesn't work properly the way we'd expect it to. And the same as when the chat, you know, pipes in with its points and you know, it's the internet, so you get Every, every possible flavor and whatnot. I, one that made me sort of roll my eyes was was on Thursday, and they were talking about the the new update had just dropped. Literally just gone live. They were playing live in it, trying to show off some of the new vehicles and some of the new content. And people, I saw one person in chat was like, "Yeah, enough about all this new content. When's the sales start?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you just can't look at these great." These people making this effort, you yeah. just can't you can't help some people. So oh, that was interesting. But but the way again they handle that really well and they, they kind of take these things head on. Yeah. There's none of this feeling of like, oh, we'll just skip those questions because we don't like the look of it. No. It's much more the emphasis of, okay, there's a problem here. Let's see if we can converse. If we can, awesome. We don't have to agree, but we can converse. Yeah. And if we can't converse, okay, well. We're moving on now because you clearly don't want to actually have a conversation about it. So, and they've got a good uh, sort of empathetic uh, feel uh, for for uh, running the program in the chat, and and so I, it's delightful for me to be able to see that it's as much fun to hang out and interact with them um, on screen as it is to interact with them. Um, it, it, exactly. the and I I think a lot of it comes from the fact that, like you mentioned, both. Mike and Tom are content creators. Like they understand that part of it. They are fully aware of what it's like to be there as a streamer and and what what that entails. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 what you're also saying about them being players really shines in just how good they are. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> Oxy or aka Tom, when he loads yep. up in a in a plane and goes around, oh my god. Yep. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> but the same with Mike. And Mike really showed that. Like he did something filthy this uh like a, a few days ago. Where let's see, I, I have it in a bit of a conversation together with Durak, uh, where he showed something Mike did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike, aka Mike goes boom, uh, did something absolutely filthy where he took his Silver Lion boosters, mm -hmm. uh, and you can count them if you want. I actually don't have to, I have a total number here. He took a total of 22 different Silver Lion boosters. Mm -hmm. One six hundred, one five hundred, one four hundred, one two, uh, two three hundred percent boosters, three two hundred percent boosters, one one hundred fifty, one two three four five five one hundred percent boosters, three seventy five percent boosters, one sixty percent boosters, and four fifty percent boosters. That's a total of twenty two different mm -hmm. silver lion boosters. For a total of 1,333 extra percent uh, <laughs> Silver Lion boosters, where the Corsair, the A2D, I think it is, or is the, is the, the AU1, like the screenshot I got here isn't the best, uh, amassed a massive amount of uh, Silver Lion boosting, uh, which I think think ended up with him getting over a million server lions through one battle. Wow. And and no matter how much boosters you have, you still have to do a fair deal in order for that to pop up. 
So he did. He 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 played well in it too. So yeah, no, that was, uh, and that just kind of speaks to how they are as mm-hmm. content creating content or community managers, content yep. creators, players, and like yeah. I and I really like the fact that they don't they don't have to walk the company line. Yep, and they can showcase broken things like that. <laughs> Yeah, it exactly. just feels good. It just feels good, you know. Well, yeah, because they're like, well, there's, as you said, there's none of this. Let's hide a thing or not talk about a thing or gloss over it. It's like, look what you can do. <laughs> like, I, I really wish for mm-hmm. Santos, Conway, and all, and all the others uh, that they could speak and behave in the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could you could you imagine how it would be like over in the wargaming camp if they could do that? I mean, I you know they they, I think it's or let's put it this way: it is clear, um, and I've seen you know something I've observed over the few years, and it's one of the aspects of why I decided not to be, uh, you know, part or you know, assuming they would accept me, but this is why I never made an, an effort to get in there, mm. um, wholeheartedly because. It, there's 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 something there you know there's this you can sense these things and there's this this undertone of like well you know we don't talk about that and um i i always i'm always troubled by things like that and yeah you're right i think it would be amazing and i think it's it's very unfortunate in some ways obviously it's their choice that's their job they choose to be there you know and whatever but I think that it must be pretty rough on them a lot of the time. Um, and yeah. I'm very respectful of the fact that they, you know, in some ways put up with it because they get huge um, audiences and a very popular product and they have to deal with, you know, as a percentage, if you say 10% are troublemakers or whatever in your chat, that's a lot of people. So, um, but I, I agree with you. I think imagine what it could be like. I think if they'd been as open and free and sort of confident and comfortable in, in being able to present the product and the content um, the way the, the, the Gaijin team can, then I probably would have been a lot more interested in being um, associated, you know, and, and um, sort of at least hanging out with them or hanging out in those kind of streams and things. But it was, it never, it never felt like that to me. I, I stopped going to the Warships official streams a long time ago because mm. it, it, it was that, you could see that there was a, a a barrier there, and that that feels very uncomfortable. So anyway, keeping it positive, maybe as part of the changes in the communication and and uh, you know and the efforts, it'll and maybe also, I'm sure that these folks all watch each other's content and streams from time to time, and maybe they pick up the one or the other. And we don't want people to be copies of each other. It's good that they're unique, and and uh, Conway and Crisantos and a lot of the team have a lot to offer and have a you know great personality and knowledge and experiences it's just you can't shake that feeling of like mm, you know yeah. something's not quite right there and if i scratch beneath the surface it's not going to look quite right you know do not look the, behind the curtain <laughs> exactly yeah. it's all fine yeah no I, I i glanced over towards chat and i saw a comment saying uh well uh look what kind of shit storms ensues if one of them misspeaks i Mm. <laughs> from from watching how War Thunder do it, and 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 that they are allowed to voice their honest opinion on something, like a plane that they're not happy with, like ah, I don't like it. I don't think it's good. I it needs this and this a change to it. Like they are allowed to speak their mind. I feel, I feel a genuineness from it. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, but there, it's also very clear that if you ask regarding a date or something coming that they have, that they have it nailed down. Like yeah. they know that, okay, um, this patch is now, so you'll likely see the next patch then. Yep. Um, but they are working with those sorts of things, but I, I also feel like the community is way more chilled out about it but that it, that could be just that the uh, fact that i haven't seen that but it's it's it, it's a completely different tone i don't know like I, but i yeah. 
I can also understand Wargaming's point of view where at the size they are, mm -hmm. there's a like, there's a certain saying regarding the uh, the Russian timetables for the trains <laughs> that could apply here, but yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yep. Uh, to other gaming news and other gaming things. Yep. <sighs> Life in Cutlass Keys, huh? Oh yes, indeed, our yeah. wonderful home. I really like that uh, zone. It is a good zone. I think I was a little hesitant at first because I was like, well, it's kind of in the corner and a bit out of the way, but actually, and also was above all of our levels at that point as well. But mm. um, I can't, the idea grew on me as soon as I started to adventure around the zone. It's a beautiful looking place. Lots of wonderful fishing spots. Mm -hmm. Don't underestimate the power of fishing. Oh, yeah. seriously, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of good stuff I've gotten out of treasure chests. Oh, mm -hmm. my word. Yep, 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 yep. And, and uh, yeah. It was, uh, it's just, uh, um, and, you know, then the game just continues to be a great experience the way we've brought through um, so many people from, from our respective communities with Grumpy together and, and then even beyond. Um, um, streamers content creators and just friends of friends and uh family members and whatever else and it's just been great like having also people from like all over the world dip their toes in and, and come and hang out or at least hang out with us in the chat if they couldn't join us on the on the server itself and you know so we're in this perpetual quandary every week of like oh do we start a 15th company or not and so forth and uh there's you know the, the usual teething problems you get with a game in its uh I would say infancy, but that's probably, I, I say that specifically just to kind of <laughs> trigger check, uh, yeah. if I'm honest. Um, but, you know, in, in, in since launch, obviously there's a number of things and they're, they seem to be fairly attentive at, at patching things. They're, funnily enough, um, they need to improve their communication. Although I do yeah. notice on the forums that their community managers or the people responding to the forum posts actually do a good job. They make it clear what's been addressed to teams. They make it clear what's known about what isn't and so forth. It's just that the fact that so much has to get to that point mm. um, and you see that, you know, um, um, it, it's a it's a bit of, of a... Um, I'm not disappointed to be a bit too harsh, but it's a bit frustrating sometimes that they're not quite and kind of more proactive and on top of some of the things that they could communicate and make clearer. For example... Yep. Like I got very frustrated with how the tax system works in the town and the costs and and the upgrades and everything because things weren't clear about how thing how money was flowing and what was influencing things like the invasions as a as a as another one. Yeah, like I feel like we've been thrown into the deep end for a lot of things, mm -hmm. uh, and in some circumstances, I don't mind it, but when it comes to things that greatly affect how you play. Mm -hmm. I I feel like we we need a clarification and and some more info. I mm -hmm. uh, just the other day, I I found out that when it comes to influence in a zone, mm -hmm. whether or not you can uh, you can declare war or not, the only thing that can that can have that is if somebody's out doing PvP quests. And I'm, I'm like, if we're the governing uh, body in a zone, and we're contributing to, to a zone, sh clearly that should have an effect on how much control we have, yeah. right? Yeah. Players, some degree of offsetting, yeah. Yeah, there's a players going out and, and doing their thing and clearing out PvE content and such should also influence that, honestly. I, I can't be the only one thinking that. Am I? Like, like? Oh no, I absolutely not. Because I, so the first point is clarity, hundred yeah. percent clarity about how exactly do all these mechanics work and feed into each other. And it wasn't given to us in the beaters, and it wasn't given to us at the launch, and it's not really fully clear um, now. A few weeks in, I think that if you do some 
fairly deep research and if and it means also pulling together reddit posts and forum posts and opinions mm -hmm. and tweets and and your own experiences in the game if you spend enough time and energy you can start to put together a little bit of a on the job handbook of like well these things more or less but you know even watching some of the more deep dive stuff and some of the content creator videos i've seen it's like this seems to be how this works and it's like yeah. this is not you know from a top notch you know amazon games uh this is we, we would expect a little bit more of that you know and and i think there could be better uh use of wikis or what you know there's so many different ways of doing it and i know it's common practice to let the fans build up their own fandom wikis and whatever mm. cool i'm totally into but then you go and you there's no information because simply no one knows um, yeah. but i fully agree with you that mechanics like when you get to the core of the later mid and late game stuff about owning um um locations and whatever you have to know how exactly do the taxes work? How exactly do the payments work? How exactly do the tiering uh, things correlate of the stations? And and how does the invasion work? And mm. and and like you said, that an attacking site can basically cause trouble in your zone, and your only real offset to that is have people patrolling. Yeah. I'm not against that as a as an idea as a principle, but you're talking twenty four seven. Yeah. <laughs> having squads, you know, and kind of your only recourse, if you're really well organized, would either be to be so big that you can just dominate and it doesn't matter. And then what's the point, right? Because if mm. you just dominate, you've won the game, game over, right? Or it's fairly balanced numbers and everything wise, but you decide deliberately as a, as a large company, okay, if we've got a third of our troops from the US, a third of our troops from Europe, and a third of our troops from like um, APAC or something, yep. <laughs> quids in, we'll own the map in a month. And <laughs> that makes no sense uh, at all, right? No, it, it doesn't. And, and I, I, there are tweaks out there that I feel needs to be done, but the... The idea of uh, how things work in a company, for instance, uh, whenever I log on, I I deposit a tiny bit of money to uh, to the bank of of the guild or company, uh, and and I do that also when I log off. And but I would love to see where is the actual money coming from to the company. Like, mm -hmm. just seeing what kind of contributions come in. Like, what comes from, from our taxes? What comes mm -hmm. from direct purchases in, in our town and, and, and so on? Like, yep. it, what comes from, from people putting, putting money in directly by, their, mm -hmm. by themselves? Like, we need to know these things. Yep. And, yeah. And, and there's... I, what else was it? Uh, you mentioned invasions. Mm -hmm. So invasions happen when corruptions have been staying for how long? Or do I'm they not happen? Even say a number because I'll probably be wrong. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. So so for for my sake, one of the things that I feel really needs to be addressed is. A corruption, if you remove it, mm -hmm. should remove something from the invasion level. Yes. There should be numbers. Yeah. And the numbers should be visible and really easily, you know, readily accessible to anybody with, a, with an interest on any side. So you can see, oh, so that it feels more like, uh, to a degree, a war of attrition, but that's in the nature of an MMO, that something's constantly evolving, constantly yeah. going on. And in the invasion mechanic, the way it is, it feels like it's constantly evolving and going on in a one-sided, one-way street. You're going to get crushed. It's just a matter of how much time the game decides before you get crushed. You know? For me right now, I, I feel like, okay, there's an invasion. And then everything's gone. And then, like, something happens in the town, and then it starts again. Like, you build up, and there's corruption, there's corruption, there's corruption, there's invasion, and then, oh! And then there's corruption, and there's invasion. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have this cycle that kind of builds up intermittently. Yeah. 
like and there's no effect if we clear it or not i i feel like i could be completely wrong by well, all means even no even the folks that have done some deep research people have spent their geek hours instead of playing the game but actually just researching and trying to understand it and help us and share the knowledge and it's inconclusive there's like well this and this seems to affect this and that kind of correlates to our experience but here's where the knowledge just drops off it just goes into a vacuum and you're like and how does the rest of it work? so can you stop it entirely Ugh, maybe yeah. some these people say yes these people say no amazon says wibble um yeah, so, yeah. I, I would love to be able to be told okay so there's an invasion coming um and okay we now have this level one corruption event popping up here mm -hmm. okay and we need to clear it and if we don't clear it quickly enough like have an actual timer on it mm -hmm. so okay we have the first one there if we don't clear that there will be a second one or you, you'll mm -hmm. have branchings from it and then when those enter kind of a sacred satanistic pattern or whatever <laughs> you want to say then yep. you get the first portal popping up. Yeah. Yeah, and and if the portal isn't cleared within X amount of time, together with these other things around it, then we get a level two event. Yeah. And then a level three event, and then a level four event. And once the level four event is out, and nobody's mm -hmm. cleared that, invasion, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Fully and, agree. And I feel like there could be sort of a risk reward thing going on there that the higher the the level goes, yeah, the better the loot you get, which is which is true now. But you need to have an incentive to stop it. Because right now I just feel like, okay, yeah, the we we cleared everything. Oh, we got invaded and lost our kitchen. Great. What why? What's the point now? So. absolutely and and then that's where it's, uh, the frustration builds up we've had a few people really really trying very very diligently as a more than a few people and uh they you know they, I'm, I'm kudos to them because they're not like flipping the table and <laughs> jumping off the balcony or something they're like you know we'll keep giving this a go and keep knocking it back because we're trying to evidence and understand it and contribute to the overall knowledge and share our knowledge with other people um but yeah, that, you know, so this is like, this is just something that's become um, quite a, a, a severe frustration, but we're hoping that um, that, that will get some clarity. And, and there's rumors and talk of them maybe easing back on it. I Good. get why it's there. I think that, I, I, again, it's, it's a shame that it wasn't, that it isn't clearer um, and that it feels like that you have to be level 50 and you can mm. only put 10 people from your company in to organize the the defending army so that's also open to abuse i've heard cases where thankfully i don't think we've experienced that but where people are deliberately going into you know getting some high levels coming from another faction going into the invasion war and then just quitting it yep. so that you lose the war by default um and lose your upgrades to your town and everything so We'll see. I'm sure it will improve. I'm very confident that they want their player base to be happy, and you can see that by what they've been patching and what they've been trying to bring in to fix some of the PvP uh, mechanics and things like that. So you can really, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with the level of their patch note detail and that they're even bringing experimental things in. So, yep. I see a finger wiggle. W while, while we're... A uh, finger wiggle? A fling, yeah, oh. a fling, a it's easy for me to say. Know. Was it, mm -hmm. though? Mm. <laughs> it could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, no, but uh, things they need to improve on and and bring in while we're on it. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but a mail system, please, pretty please, allow me to send yeah. items, not just money. Because <laughs> being able to send items to somebody, say, hey, could you craft a bag for me? Here's the stuff and and everything, instead of having to meet up. I like the whole meet up process by all means, but. Mm. If if we're gonna have uh, have a, a complete kind of uh, system where we have to meet up, we have to use Asoth to to craft stuff, then allow me a different travel system. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
some sort so of I, horse yeah. and carriage or whatever it is like just an automated travel from one point to another which i pay in in coins or whatnot mm -hmm. that allows me to just say okay i'm on my way i'll be landing and you know yeah. we we need that and one last mm -hmm. thing that i mm -hmm. oh <laughs> the auction house or the market mm -hmm. Can't, can't it just be global? Pretty please. <laughs> it's so stupid that I have several different prices I need to contend with across the entire globe. Like, an mm -hmm. Onyx can sell for 50. Like, a pristine Onyx can sell for 50 in Cutlass Keys and 5,000 yeah. in a different zone. Yeah. Well, firstly, I'm sorry about my Onyx... Uh... <laughs> market fixing okay look i this is just the way some dwarves like to make their cash diggy, diggy um, hole, diggy, diggy hole. i i i think uh <laughs> shout out to rajira for my new channel art by the way with all the gemstones all over it yes that's deliberate um but i think that uh i think that there's i think that they've got the basis of like a hybrid system that could be very very fun um and i'll uh so i agree with you in, in on the basis of it if it's it, on the basis of how it is now where everything can go on every market then it's it's almost i see what they try to do but like what's the point eventually after a few days you're like meh however i like now this is where i this is um, maybe i would uh imagine too far here mm -hmm. um but I also tie this into a couple of comments coming in chat uh, uh, from Nevermind, for example, about the topic of a fee on the mailing system and a fee on the travel, like you mentioned. Mate, that could be relevant. I like an idea, and I think given the granularity that they're going to in the game in so many other areas, and, and you know the crafting as, as the primary example, um, I like the idea. Now, this is not, you know, this is just my rough thought on it, mm -hmm. um, of some kind of sliding scale or mechanical element where your influence in a territory, the influence of your faction, maybe the influence even of your company, right? And then maybe even you as a player, but, you know, let's not go too far here. But having an in, uh, the influence mechanic, I find really fascinating as an idea. Okay. I like the idea of having your influence and, in, like, you've got your standing, for example. I like the idea of a global market system, but... Um, items that are native, and this could extend to like crafted and tagged as this was crafted here, could be also matched up with some kind of numbers around, number crunching around your influence of your faction, your company, um, and yourself, how much time you've spent in a zone, that kind of thing. And maybe you have like a kind of a standing in terms of a trade standing. So are you a reputable crafter are you a reputable trader that can you know so your onyx maybe you can't change you know the price is just the price but you could change the fees um or the availability mechanics like the more reputation if you have a good standing with reek water you know the other end of the map on the south coast then you can place your items in reek water and in our place and you see a global or a territorial overlapped pricing system because you've done good work there you've fought corruption in reek waters therefore even though it's not your home territory it might not belong to our faction you have a good enough of a standing because of what you've contributed to that area to help that town and those people survive um and, and flourish you therefore can use that um trade post yeah whereas in ebon scale where just an example end game we haven't really been in there you sorry who are you? We we don't buy from you. We only buy yeah you know, okay. from Sony. Okay, I I th so, I, th I think I'm I'm think I'm I'm with you here because mm. first I I kind of didn't see how you'd make the standing system work here, but as is the standing system, once you hit rank ten in a zone, that's when you're allowed to buy a house. Yep. But let's work in other things in the standing system. For instance, the ability to use. The trade post. Or or have it linked. Have it linked, rather. You can use it if you travel there, but, but have it linked to the others. Mm -hmm. uh, and the higher your standing, the less the fee of posting. Yep. Yep. 
So you could have things like custom, you know, sliding scale custom fees influenced by your standing or your faction standing, that kind of thing. I just think that it would start to flesh out. Um, not not exactly this way, but just in this kind of rough thinking, it would start to flesh out and make it more of a mesh so that the the world was f more complex but felt more natural. Mm. Like if you have this relationship, you know, not I don't want to go into any real life political stuff, but you know, so and so and so and so like trading with each other better than so and so and so and so, and that kind of thing, and that's based on their interactions and 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 uh, how they sort of feel about each other and whatever else. And uh, I like that idea. Similar, we talked about vaguely from time to time about um, I'd love to see more than just the one settlement yes. in the region. Yes, like, please. You have a little homestead, a small village somewhere, Hamlet, a little a farm, and you could get your farming produce, for example, at a better rate or either production volume mm -hmm. or cost or both based on, again, is it your faction's territory? Is it your, how is your company standing in that area? Have you fought corruption? You could take side quests, help the farmer chase off the turkeys, have more pumpkins, Come on. you know, <laughs> um, and so you know, I think that that's what I love about, and maybe what excites me the most about New World, um, other than playing with our community, is that the framework that's there, that foundation that's there, feels like it's scalable in all these different dimensions. Oh, yeah. We'll see where it goes. Like some of the things feel like they've taken a bit, a bit too far. Um, one, one of my favorite examples is the recipe for boiled potatoes. Uh, the recipe for boiled potatoes, when, uh, for those who don't know, boiled potatoes in, in New World, they give you luck when mining for X amount of minutes. Uh, like there's, there's first, uh, herb roasted potatoes and, and so on and so forth. And they give more and more luck the higher. Boiled potatoes, which most of us, when we hear boiled potatoes, we think, yeah, you chuck some potatoes in water and you boil them, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's your first image when you hear boiled potatoes. Very straightforward. Yeah, no. In, <laughs> in New World, you need potatoes, of course. You need butter. That's for, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. that it adds taste. Uh, you need, is it, is it spice? I can't remember. Like, there's a few things that you add there. Mm -hmm. Water, of course. Mm -hmm. But can you, can you please explain to me where the fucking cauliflower comes in? <laughs> where, <laughs> where in the ever-loving fuck does cauliflower fit into boiled potatoes <laughs> it's not boiled potatoes and cauliflower then i'd be okay yeah. with it but <laughs> no I think the recipe is yeah. boiled potatoes i think ah! there's a lot of chefs up and down the whole of the map scratching their heads going what wait a minute oh no yeah we forgot the cauliflower again oh it's just gonna go moldy next to the boiled potatoes. exactly every exactly week. every week Oh, it's it's just oh, it's so annoying, and yeah. and just how hard it is to get some of these very basic ingredients. Yeah, salt. I know I've mentioned this before. Why is salt so freakishly hard to get a hold of? We have a huge sea. We have we have mines. We we have rock salt. I can guarantee you this. Yeah. A plenty, in in the, like if we have crystals. We have rock salts. Let us mine it. Let us produce this instead of having to go into some poor sailor's crate and say, oh, see, you have milk, oranges, and salt in here. That's, that, that, I'll take that. Goodbye. You know? Why? Why am I going around stealing somebody's freaking salt out of a crate down at the beach instead of making it or buying it from some guy who's gone out and gathered it? You know? It's well, just, you know, oh. it's, 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 I guess it's like the old adage goes, you know, why harvest it freely, peacefully when you can steal it from someone? Yeah, yeah. You might need more than you do.
<laughs> That's a weird adage. I've never heard that before. Could you like, is this some sort of dwarven uh, wisdom? Hard. It's, it's a rough translation. It's, it's a it's, rough translation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's the hill dwarves. Yeah, they're ah, all there. Ah, you know? right. I think yeah. it's the sun. It goes to their heads. Yeah. Yeah. So is yeah. is that Paris hill dwarf too, or is yeah. it like, I'm I'm just oh, no, I'm sorry. That was bad. Well, no, no, like, no. Never mind. Never mind. No, but there are some of these recipes where they need they need to tone it back a bit. Mm -hmm. I, uh, another thing that annoys me is mm. um, the smelting of inga, ingots. Mm. Like, with the hard metals such as steel and iron, star metal, or a calcum, uh, void metal, I, I'm okay with those having multiple ingredients uh, in order to work up to a certain level. Where I have an issue, however, is why do I need to have gold ore and a silver ingot to smelt a gold ingot? <laughs> why do I then have to have a gold ingot to smelt the platinum ingot. Mm. Like, why? I mean, I, I agree. I think we should be careful at this point, though, because we don't want anybody from uh, Amazon Games to overhear this, and then they, you know what? We forgot the f***ing cauliflower. Get the cauliflower <laughs> over the market. Over God. the smelter now. I swear, I swear, if I log in and I have to have cauliflower for smelting my fucking gold someday, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it, well, and I'm gonna be throwing birch world saplings exclusive. at people, and there's gonna be world news, crazy northern Norwegian guy throws birch saplings at tourists. <laughs> and locals. <laughs> And <laughs> why are you throwing it at locals? Why we ran out of tourists? <laughs> Crazy northern Norwegian guy breaks into Amazon office, throws bird saplings. <laughs> No, crazy Norwegian guy and dwarf break into Amazon Game Studios, uh, caught on camera. When asked what were they doing, all the only answer they had was to turn and point at a bucket of cauliflower. <laughs> they were in the coffee machine. Holy flower, yeah. Uh, enjoy your coffee, Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your fucking coffee. Cauliflower coffee, huh? Mm. Wow. I hope you had cauliflower in your space <laughs> shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. I'm walking here, you know? Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shatner wouldn't agree to go to space unless he had cauliflower. Yeah, yeah there you go. There, that, that, sounds, uh, that sounds familiar. Oh right. my word! No, I. There are certain things they can work on. I feel, and and that's that's one of them. But overall, I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed. They've they've done good work, man. They have. So uh, no, that's the, the, the. Let's hope they can keep it up in a good way. Agreed. And uh, I hear I hear rumors that uh, mm -hmm. a certain map has been. Uh, um, data mind. Oh, really? Oh, oh yes. Okay. They've uh, they've data mined the entire map so far, and it's oh. huge. It is so huge. Interesting. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, any time that there's some good mining action going on, I'm all over it. Indeed, indeed. Um. Let's but, see. Yes. Go how ahead. about we segue mm -hmm. from the, the, the perfect setup of the, the cauliflower as part of the boiled potatoes recipe not making any sense yep. to another Amazon related topic that makes no sense. Okay. In the category of streaming. Yeah. Let's go for it. And that would be um boost channel boosting. Paying to boost. Yeah. Pay can you hey, pay, throw throw money down? We may, we we will, we promise to say, hey, someone over there on Twitch. <sighs> can we? <laughs> can you walk me through this? Because you 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 
you introduced this in the middle of the grumbling, and I I immediately fired on all cylinders for this because it pisses me off. Just the just the idea of it pisses me off. Mm -hmm. Walk walk me through. What what are they planning on doing? What what's going on? Yeah. So they they see this as a method to help boost visibility and bring more people um, to streams. Now, a while back, um, I want to. I'm looking it up here in parallel because I want to get the right um, wording. But a while back, they had. Um, boosting the channel as just a community challenge thing. Yeah, with channel points and such, use yes. Your channel points and um, the net result, if there was enough, was some sort of competition running in the background, whatever, like uh, passively, and you would get your channel kind of like shown up somewhere more prominent. Not exactly mm. necessarily front page, front page, but somewhere on the recommended channels for a category, that kind of thing. So you'd have an opportunity. And I thought that that was kind of quite fun and interesting and nice way for people to use the channel points and for your community to say, hey, let's get some love out there. Let's get some more people on board. Sounds like a pretty cool thing. So that was quite fun when it ran. And then after a while, that just kind of drifted off a bit. Yeah, I've, I've never seen it used after that. Yeah, it's really, really easy to find the articles uh, on Twitch for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah I can imagine. To find the articles for Would You Believe It? Um, are the actual uh, the current thing that they've got running? Um, I'm trying to. They tweeted it, so I want to find. I want to, you know, get the actual yeah. wording from them. Um, bah, 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 bah. I wish I'd got this before. <laughs> uh, it's as if we had an editorial meeting preparing know, topics in the, in, the, right. uh, in the forefront. Mm, no, mm. Yeah, exactly. I just didn't. The one thing I didn't do was open the exact article. Um, but anyway, here I can find something from. A reasonably reliable source. Yep. So here's from Eurogamer. Twitch. Oh, all right. Turn off ad block. Okay. I need to read your article right now live. So <laughs> uh, Twitch has begun testing a new paid boost feature on their streaming platform. Boost has been available in a test since last December and allows viewers to pull free channel points to boost the stream with the front page, yada, yada, yada. Now, instead of channel points, viewers will be able to pay money to achieve the same thing. However, stream streamers will not receive any share of that money. Um, yeah, let's see. Yada, yada, yada. Let's see. Here we go. Um, I literally just turned that off. Why are you telling me to turn it off again? Okay. Uh, with Boost, 100% of the money spent will go to giving the creator as much exposure as possible so that they can grow effectively. So in other words... Give Twitch extra money whilst you're viewing the channel you're already intrigued enough to be on and get extra promotion and exposure from us. Wow. Yeah, where we all know, the whole world kind of know, in this space knows that, um, you know, visibility or whatever, discoverability isn't exactly their strongest uh, asset. And right? wow. Yeah. So, okay. so here it, it goes a little further. So for 10 minutes during a stream, which will pop up at random, viewers will be able to participate in the boost by purchasing recommendations. Oh, Jesus. In the patch notes uh, demonstration, 1,000 recommendations was 99 cents and 3,000 recommendations was $2.97. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to read any more. I think we get the gist of it. What? Okay. Um, does it, uh, one question there. Does it mention anything that the viewer gets out of this for actual paying? Or um, is it just broken? So it, it, it is important to say that this is an experiment yeah. that they're running. By all means. Um, all and it will only be available to streamers with under 250 viewers. <sighs> So it's an interesting threshold. Yeah. Um, so the aim then, it says, is to offer a method of promotion for smaller streamers. Well, I think you need to think about your numbers a bit more carefully. But anyway, um, streamers are reliant on Twitch algorithm to provide discoverability, which naturally favors those who with the biggest audience. 
that well maybe have a look at those mechanics oh. and think about how you're promoting uh why not have a section on your front page that says here's some small streamers and then round robin that anyway, yeah uh, the new pay boost feature will allow streamers to buy their way to the top instead Will it though? How does hang on? How does the streamer buy that anyway? Though that's this will depend on the generosity of their viewers and will inevitably still favor those with large audiences. Yeah. Surprise, the people who've got 249 viewers most of the time who have disposable income <laughs> oh. end up being promoted and growing much faster than the probably just as deserving folks sitting there with 10. I'm just okay. Yeah. So so what we're learning here is Twitch wants more money. Uh, I'm not shocked by all means. This this is uh, this is fine. And and I'm I'm in agreement. They they deserve more money. So uh, there's that part. But I mean, come on. What, 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 what the crap? What the crap? I, how, there's literally no incentive for the viewer to do this. Like, the only incentive that's there is like, oh, I, I helped you uh, gain more viewers. Yeah. And to, to quote, Bane in, in Batman. Mm. Uh, do you feel in charge? I gave you money. <laughs> and that gives you power over me? No, no, it doesn't. Like, it, <laughs> it's just going to incentivize people to to act weirdly and and do stuff that isn't neither smart nor... <laughs> like, oh... I don't yep. see anything good from this. I think that, yeah, it, it's been badly received generally across the board. And I think that this is just, uh, so, you know, it's another one of those, nobody really should green light things like this. Uh, there, yes, it's an experiment. Yes, it's limited in, in scope to an extent. But even so, you know, at the end of it, it just reeks of pay to win. And yeah. they need to... I, again, as I said, I thought the channel points thing was quite cool. There could be an argument that that favors larger communities, and and so. But then you can manage that by putting certain caps on it and saying, yeah. like, there were caps like you can only uh, commit so many points per person per day, and you know, and therefore people are being, you know, um, uh, subtly, um, not incentivized is the wrong word, but subtly kind of. Um, prompted to turn up every day and 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 hang out and and things like that you know and and interact i guess more with the with the channels that they may be in every day anyway um but more more passively more more lurking capacity or whatever so you know it's one of those it's kind of interesting idea it's morphed into something you know monetized and that doesn't it doesn't seem very appropriate so I just thought it was worth us having a little talk and a short rant together about it. Right, it's just it it's it's stupid. I'm all yep. for uh, Twitch making more money and being able to develop more 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 tools for us, developing more security for us, um, and developing more ways of discoverability. I yep. there are so many ways they can do that though. Like one of the one of the ways I feel uh, that they could really utilize the clips is because right mm -hmm. now, right now you have Twitch clips being made, and then they get shared on the Discord or put into a video, mm -hmm. and after that, where do they reside? Where do they get reused? They get reused on those Discords in those YouTube videos. They're not yep. even on the channel. They're not even on Twitch. Let us have a hashtag system. Let us have an upvote system. Mm -hmm. Like, how many times have you gone into a clip and seen, oh, there's a heart there. Click. Oh, suddenly you're following a channel. Like, it's yep. not a like on that. It's th There's no counter on it. There's no, oh, th yep. this many people have interacted with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's let's get this out there. No. 
Like they are, they're not promoting people to stay on their own platform, and it's it's weird. And 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 allowing people to, like one thing I'll say, that they're mm-hmm. doing right now, is the channel tags are becoming more and more prevalent and and are becoming more guiding. And I, I like that. I've recently mm-hmm. started adding ADHD and neurodivergent to my streams. Okay. So that people can click that and they know when they come in here, yes, I, I am indeed neurodivergent. I can add that as a tag. But how do you search for tags? Yeah. Do, do, do I just do I just go into Twitch and go neurodivergent? Yes, yes, I do. But there's nothing leading me to the system. It's not obvious. Yeah, no. I agree. Yeah. So front page should have a connection with your profile. You set up a profile. You tell Twitch something about you. ADHD, for instance. Yeah. Okay. Here's a list of channels that mm-hmm. have ADHD as a tag. All right. I also like uh, 3D printing. You know. <laughs> so you okay. That. Here's here's some here's some channels that correlate between these things. Um. They like. There, there's a channel there that has both even you might like them go check them out you know that sort of thing oh my goodness this channel's got everything it's adhd 3d printing and they have a bag of cauliflower next to their coffee machine fuck the cauliflower I mean, god damn i'm gonna be fucking triggered with fucking cauliflower oh, i'm sorry for swearing no i'm not yeah in, in, in fact, take, take, <laughs> take my credit card let's let's, let's boost the channel yeah Everyone needs to see this, yeah. Um, yeah, no. So, uh, something that just briefly that did come up uh, in the chat um, mm-hmm. was uh, YouTube gaming, um, where they're trying to, you know, morph or push their streaming part of the yep. channel. Um, and they've just done some announcements, uh, I think yesterday or today even, about um, tweaking the, you know, bringing in the uh, the gift joins or subscription type service. Um, bringing in some more tweaks to discoverability, yeah, for the live streaming part, um, and uh, uh, a number of other bits and pieces, you know, with their shorts and so forth. So um, clearly, YouTube wants to, you know, make more of a, a claim on the uh, live streaming part because I, I mean, uh, simplistically for me, it's like Twitch is live streaming and YouTube is kind of everything else, the VODs and exactly. the music exactly. and all that kind of stuff, right? I think what Twitch has done brilliantly is that they've morphed from a mostly gaming and geek-oriented platform to being much broader. There's a lot of music and the just chatting is huge mm-hmm. and all that kind of thing. So, and, and I agree with all the categories and that. Great job, but they're really lacking in that whole discoverability and, and how they promote the vastness and the variety and diversity of the content. And then they're so proud of all of that and and they promote it in at the top level Mm. from marketing point of view but they don't actively promote it every single second of every single day um for all of the people that are actually out there that aren't the lucky few in the you know ambassador program or something like that that's a great program i but so much that they do right but they go halfway and then they go oh we did that bit now well let's move to the next topic rather than saying Let's fully do that part and then look. And then, and the silly thing is that they could be untouchable in some regards, right? They I could. never, they very people, all the people that go about YouTube and all the rest of it, and this is maybe my uh, naivety in some degree or whatever, but I just still, and I'm sure that that's the same or even, even more so from the vast majority of people on the interweb every day. I do not go live stream. Oh, let's check who's live on YouTube. No, right? no, exactly. <laughs> or Facebook gaming, for that matter, which is yeah. also a pretty big thing. <laughs> People to to evidence their real life and, and be themselves on the interweb in front of everyone else. <laughs> so, no, no, Facebook, uh, Facebook has its own streaming service where uh, they've recently paid people to come over to be partners and say, yeah, yeah you, uh, you'll keep everything that you make over the next three months. I'm like, yeah, sure. But, you know, 
Yeah, there there are a few things there. Um, but you touched on YouTube, uh, and mm. I feel like we could easily uh, we could easily you know just kind of transition uh, over to our uh, next like topic here now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I feel like we've beaten the streaming horse uh, with a dead stick enough, mm. or something. However, that uh, we, adage we goes. Beat the stream, the dead streaming horse with a cauliflower. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will purchase cauliflower I'm... only to <laughs> ruin it. Soon. You're gonna, you're gonna give me cauliflower ears with cauliflower. Oh, well, I'm just gonna. Whoa. I wish we would. I wish our podcast was getting boosted to the front page every time. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, but no, I've yeah. Had the question, Cauli- cauliflower emote when? Oh, gods. No. Gods, no, no. Only Although, for the podcast. Events. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you that we should segue, especially as the yeah. time. But yes. um, there's one yes. thing I'd like to mention that's mm-hmm. more, much more positive and it won't take long. Um, but on the Twitch side, I'm very, very happy with the trial they're running for first time chatter. I yes. Really love very good system. Very good system. First I like time it. chatter thing, the way they've done it graphically, even in OBS, it's perfectly integrated, beautifully highlighted, simplistic, but really stands out without all the pizzazz or having to be added or anything like that. Hats off to whoever designed that piece and greenlit that bit. I assume you're not the same person working on the boost team. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. But thank you for the first time chatter. I love it. I've had several people speak up and I think that they um they obviously feel confident to, to which is sometimes a strange thing that people are enjoying but they don't want to say and uh, they seem to like it. It's easy for me to then favorably call them out and and thank them for their participation. Love it. More of that. Yeah, no, like the the ability to uh, to say, hey, welcome in, you, you're new here, uh, and then kind of show them around the place is uh, it's very nice. It is. Yeah. So I, for my sake, using chatty, I I need to have that worked in there too. But hey, um, we are we are part of a different project though, all regarding uh, YouTube and the Twitch and such. There's a there's there's a Twitch channel out there called Pathfinding Adventures, where me and Grumbles are part of a current campaign for Starfinder, where we uh, role play uh, our characters. Uh, Mr. Grumbles here plays um, a wonderful androidy kind of being <laughs> called Arnd, mm-hmm. with a uh, with with a love for polka, oddly enough. Well, I don't know. No, no, not just polka. There are other things. Um, with a very inquisitive mind, I play a character called uh, Carl Mason, a.k.a. Cal Mason, uh, who's uh, an actor from Earth, human, uh, trying to make his way and, and, and figure out a few mysteries in his life. And... And we we have live streamed a few of these moments, mm-hmm. but what we recently found out is that we want to make more video on demand of these things. So Pathfinding Adventures will hopefully soon have a YouTube channel where we can direct people to watch VODs, to watch uh, videos, leave comments, uh, and, and watch and, and keep up with series. That way you don't have to be there live when it happens. Although that's also fun. Um, yep. But we'll we'll see if if that stays uh, live. But there are other adventures going on there. With Sugar Delicious being the DM for a lot of it. Uh, Margon is one of the players. Finn is there. Um, uh, Captain Bonty, who's a part of both of our communities, is also there as a player. Um, Lanavar is a part of our Starfinder campaign. There's others out there, so really do go uh, go check them out. Uh, the Pathfinder Adventures, that is. So but we're we're gonna be working a bit on that. And and we talked a bit about the Pomodoro method that I'm I've become a big fan of, where we sit down, we do some work for a limited uh, time to try to reach a goal and they like and, and I think we might be doing that for for the Pathfinder 
uh, Pathfinding Adventures channel for for at least the VOD part of it mm -hmm. uh, to start with, and then we'll see where we're going. And and we're uh, we're going to be doing um, uh, we're going to be doing more there. Uh, I also have a a weird message on my ear right now saying uh, the YouTube channel is already up with some of the Red Lions adventures. So that's good. That's yes. Good. Um, there you go. I, I, I was going to bring that up as well. I've, I've posted the links here as well ah, for yes. both their Twitch channel and their uh, YouTube channel. Yep. Um, and we'll include some of that in the old description doobly doos. Uh, post, post podcast, postcast. Postcast. There you go. Exit to postcast. Exit to. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, that's the after hours show. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. This is a this is a very very different uh, yeah. format. Yeah, that's um, that's when we get the hot tub out. Uh, and uh, oh god, next we... time we do one of these live, we'll have to have the, the, the hot oh, yes. tub in the background, like yes. like uh, Mike and Tom were doing. <laughs> oh, we missed the trick. I mean, we're, we're actually we're just under the water in the bubbles. And we are, we are like we are emerging like some uh, Cthulhu esque. Uh, oh. uh, being <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think it's very clear that we are coming to the end of the podcast <laughs> with how our brains are reacting and how we're no. <laughs> we're staying well, on the different topics silly giggling about stuff that makes no sense <laughs> yeah. whatsoever what are you talking about um so i think it's time to uh, to start rounding off there um even though we should have covered more of xp counting versus milestones i'm sorry we you know what no Let's jump into it. Let's hear. Because well, the uh, I, something to smile about mm -hmm. is very quick to uh, to present. So let's. This I, I want to. Yeah, I, I, I think we have. A, we we we're not doing too bad on timing, considering. No, nah, we're that we did agree. We'll just sort of improv and free form yeah. it a little bit. We're, at, um, we're almost two hours recorded. So exactly, that's uh, what we aim for for the audio. Uh, yeah. Because uh, because medically, people's ears will literally fall off of their heads if we go longer. Yeah, than they'll that. get cauliflower. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, I know, oh, we wish we could have the ching sound. <laughs> anyway, um, yep. uh, yeah, so we thought we'd talk a little bit in the role playing section about both Pathfinding Adventures, which I think we did well. Um, and uh, also, uh, I, I just posed the topic of uh, it's one that comes up every once in a while, and that's if anybody's running a campaign or playing in a campaign. Um, how to handle progression of the characters in terms of levels and experience. And there's, you know, there's probably multiple models, but two that I'm familiar with and have worked with are um, just simple, I'll just call it XP counting or like the probably the default or standard progression system um, where you have numbers and they're associated with, you know, the types of enemy, the number of enemy. Yeah, encounters and, and like everything, that. yeah. Yep. Um, or there's the milestone system where you choose uh, basically key points in your campaign, your story, particular arcs or side quests, things like that, or even just something kind of spectacular that, that occurred that maybe uh, you didn't even plan as the GM, but it just kind of went that way. Um, uh, otherwise known as, why are you ignoring all of my plot points? <laughs> um, uh, spoken from my inner DM voice. Uh, uh and uh, yeah, I thought it'd be fun. Um, I'm a huge fan of the milestone system. I love it. Yeah. Um, but I've in my most recent campaign, we talked about it with the players, very very experienced crew, most of them, in fact, all of them, DM as well in their own right. Um, and we have a lot of fun. And we we did a sort of a hybrid where we used the point system for I think it was the first five levels. Mm. Um, and from then we progressed to milestone because it seemed to fit the way. Um, you know, we run the campaign the way they run their characters and it made things nice and simple at the beginning while they're doing, they can focus then on the developing their character and, and how to work, you know, how the character is at all in their minds and, and how it interacts and, and responds to the, the teams uh, that it's a part of and the story world that it's put into. And it just seemed to be a nice, simple way of progressing things. And you could say, okay, this was this kind of encounter today. Here you go. Yeah. And then you get to like, um, and this is the D and D five E system we're talking about. So I mentioned there's different levels, different points. Um, moved on to milestone because they started to become somewhat known, somewhat 
intrinsic to what was going on in in their region um and uh it just made a lot more sense to me so we just talked about it and i just wondered uh, tiger what your experiences were and whether you've got particular preferences or how you do it um it all it all differs a bit uh but usually when i when i gm i i go by one thing that that i know a lot of gms do it's the rule of cool which is mm-hmm. if something fits into the story or if something cool happens, you allow it, even if it's not within the rules. Uh, and with a rule of cool being a thing, I, I I think that the milestone system just fits that so much better. Because if, if you're going to go ahead and start counting XP through an encounter when when you're literally there to tell a story and allow a player to do something fun that might not be the rules and then go, oh yes, but this uh, this horde of uh, of orcs that you slayed by yourself, um, actually, since they aren't really uh, an encounter, you're not allowed to do this, so you can only get one XP for Like, doing that whole thing? No. However, there are, like kind of like this hybrid system you you mentioned, I like the idea of that. Because sometimes it's really nice to just go sit down and, and and only do the rules. Like, you follow combat to the point, to the rules. You see how much XP you get. You see how much, like, everything it gets. But mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. thing I always have a problem with, with that system is how, how do you reward people then for completing a mission? Like, you set them out on this. How do you reward them? Mm-hmm. Like, if if you haven't scaled the encounters for battle properly, mm-hmm. how do you give them XP for it? Mm-hmm. If you follow that system. Because then you could end up with, with, a, with a place where um, there's, there's encounters leaving your, your, your team suddenly way under leveled compared to where you need to be in the story Mm -hmm. so no i'm i'm a way big fan big fan of the milestone system because it's so much Mm -hmm. easier to see okay you've done an appropriate thing here yep have a level or 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 this is it it feels like okay you've 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 been training hard or something and Mm -hmm. and then the level then kind of feels like it fits in, you know, it, yeah, it's part yeah. of the story. So I'm, I'm very much there with you on that one. Uh, it's, uh... I like it. I just thought it was kind of fun because I, I'd, I'd gone to the point where I was so much milestone, like fixated on it. And, uh, and I'm sort of glad that we tried it this time around in this new campaign, just to mix it up and see. And it, and it felt like it worked quite well. Um, I'm also a little bit nervous. I think we can segue now, but I'm just going to blow any segue opportunity by saying uh, <laughs> hot tub stream confirmed hype in the chat is oh, not correct in any way, shape, or form. So it's when I, for legal reasons, we. <laughs> yeah, for, for, legal, for legal reasons, uh, this is a, a comment of us not committing to that. <laughs> yeah, I like the. I just had the thought though. At some point, there might be like a, a lager for a, a campfire, um, in your backyard, which and then on live from the north. So technically, in beaches and hot tubs. <laughs> Imagine that, like a few years ago, in an, in a, in a, in the other world that we used to live in. Yeah. Oh, that could be cool. Having an RP mm. night around the 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 fireplace. That could be nice. But yeah, uh, we're, uh, we're we're coming up towards uh, two hours recorded and been live for yep. uh, one hour, 57 and 15 seconds there, mm-hmm. uh, meaning we should start rounding it off. We should. Uh, we should leave and, people with a smile on their face. Yeah, and then we're going we're gonna to leave them with a smile on their face in the usual fashion. I'm going to start out with, uh, with one of mine because I have two. I might might just do both both of mine, uh, mostly to kind of see if you were able to restrict yourself on time. Grumbles. Wow. Wow. I know. <sighs> I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Who needs friends with enemies like these or something? I well, know. you know, that falls into the category of it's only funny because it's true, but, you know. Um, I I went to the store today to pick up a package. Mm. A package sent to what me. What was in this package? Uh, by uh, a certain community member called Wazzle. Wazzle! Wazzle! Uh, he does 3D printing. And uh, and as I uh, as I went that and I picked that up, I uh, came home. I also went to my mailbox uh, to find a T-shirt I'd ordered. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna be able to show the T-shirt on uh, on on the Twitch uh, thing, or neither really be on YouTube, uh, honestly. However, I will leave a link to this. Uh, but to those who know and understand the reference. I have received my No No Slug t-shirt today, which was artwork made by Dane TV, uh, who's part of our company and he's been part of the community for a long time, where he made a t-shirt of that. Uh, and I, I will leave a link. Uh, I'll probably drop the link on Discord very soon too. Uh, but I picked that up and it looks glorious in its own way. <laughs> And uh, for those who want to know more about the No No Slug, uh, feel free to contact yeah. me. But the other thing, today, I today up, yeah, that goes into the category for me of today. I learned. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the, that's definitely yep. The the other yep. thing I picked up today was, of course, the package from Wazzle, uh, where he three D printed a gold banana for me. Sadly, during shipping, the legs got broken off, so I'm gonna have to find a, a way of. Of gluing those back on but this this thing here i tell you like it's 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 glorious first and foremost the size of it is is honestly impressive so here's my hand here's the banana next to it <laughs> rude banana for scale rude banana for scale look at that thing look at that thing it is <laughs> glorious <laughs> It is so cool. So this this 3D printed thing where it's just like the teeth and everything. Like, it's it's just so cool. And it's just, yeah, like this fits the channel so well. <laughs> like it, this is this is the, the daily banana shouting get wrecked nerd or something like that. And it's yeah, it, he's yeah. clearly happy to see you too. Uh, so, you know, there's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's, so it's, now we, we have a completely new expression on tiger's channel when when he's giving you the daily banana <laughs> <laughs> oh god don't maybe don't be immediately pleased uh, check the context first yeah first. yeah no uh, yeah so he's he's glorious and uh, thank you wazzle uh, and he he also sent me a christmas ornament with uh, where it says tiger's dad so that's actually really cool should have brought that too um, Very cool. But yeah, that is uh, that really made me smile when I opened that. So that's really, really fun. Yeah. How about you? What do you got for us? Uh, well, I did a uh, little bit of a fun event last Sunday uh, in support of uh, a very worthy cause, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, run very smoothly, and um, I've just been smiling all week. I've been exhausted and tired because of life and work and, and everything else and all the energy, but um, the happiest kind of tired, you know, uh, that you can be where you just know you've you've done something to help. Uh, we both do uh, bits and pieces where we can to help um, uh, various uh, causes uh, that are dear to our hearts or that we, where we see a, a need and an opportunity. Um, yeah, so I'm just very happy and I would uh, like to just mention again my gratitude and, and uh, the the good feelings uh, for everybody that was able to um, not only contribute in a financial sense, but be there, interact, have fun. Um, Tiger, obviously yourself, thank you again sincerely for making time and, and joining in the fun. I very much appreciated that, as with others that were able to join us too. We're not quite done and, with uh, that yet. We will be doing something very soon, by the way. Yeah, I, well, you see, this is the point where I thought the time buzzer would kick in and it'd be like... You grumbles, you can't mention any of the scary stuff so that we double down on the commitment because <laughs> we've run out of time. Um, but yes, very foolishly, not only will I be playing 
uh, alien isolation. That's how I'm going to do that. <laughs> anyway, um, but also there will be um, a joint phasmophobia stream. I traditionally play this yeah. once per year on on Halloween, yeah. and I believe that Mr. Tiger is... Uh, has uh, committed himself. Yeah. 99.69% 9, committed to joining us for yeah. Halloween. Yeah. I need to reach out to TC Freer and see if he's going to come and be our man in the van. <sighs> <laughs> TC, no longer a uh, Twitch streamer. Also, uh, he's also man in a van, not man with a man, mm. but uh, with, with, a, with a van. I don't mm. know where this accent is coming from. No. I have no, no idea. Hans, get the Flammenwerfer. Oh, God, not the, not the, the Flammenwerfer. Not the Flammenwerfer. Not the one that flam <laughs> wears Flammen. No, 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 no. Nein, we don't need that one now. Wow, <laughs> that unraveled. Yes, no, seriously, great work on the charity. Uh, more than happy to be part of uh, the, the, the Soiling My Pants stream because of that. Phasmophobia has apparently become more scary since last time. So, yay! Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it's time to uh, roll this uh, thing uh, around the corner and tip it off the edge. Uh, thank you to everybody who showed up and listened to it live. I want to say that. Thank yeah. you to everybody who, once again, for, uh, for listening to us on YouTube or whatever uh, podcasts are available. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, you mentioned it. Um, if there's a platform you can't find us on and you want us on that, let me know and I'll try to get us listed there. But with that being said, uh, thank you for exiting to port with us. Uh, I've been Tiger. He's been Grumbles. Yep. Tiger, there's, there's one thing. Yeah. yeah Quick. Yeah, yeah, I know you're yeah. in your flow. Yeah. Let's try it. Right. Okay. Fist bump. Star explosion. Okay. Okay. So... Wow, you have huge fists on on this on this screen right now. <laughs> I mean, name of my. Wow. Whatever. Okay. Oh, and, uh, uh, and... and no. There we go. I. Oh, it's, it's it's close enough. Close enough. <laughs> I'm watching it back on the. Uh, oh my yeah. Very very close. Very wall. close. Very close. Oh. But yeah, uh, I've been Tiger. He's been Grumbles. Thank you for accepting the port with us, and we'll see you guys. In the next one.